thanks to everyone who took part in the crafting project over the last few days. If you had half as much fun as I did, then good, I had more fun than you. <laughs> so, is it going to change? So, I think it's important, well, I don't, I don't like going to a talk and then realizing halfway through that the person isn't talking about what I thought it was going to be. So, I looked up the wiki definition of crafting and it is the recreational outdoor activity of using an inflatable raft to navigate a river or other body of water. So I was a bit off base with the crochet thing, but we press on. So before I get on to rafts, a little bit about my own background. I come from a long line of hominids. So the last common ancestor between humans and chimps is off the bottom of the page there, about seven million years ago. There's me up the top, 24 years ago, Australopithecus, Lucy. And where I think the family tree gets interesting, is in the middle-ish about two million years ago with Homo habilis. And the reason it's interesting is a bunch of rocks, but really useful rocks. These are the earliest recognizable manufactured tools. I won't say the earliest tools ever used by humans, and the reason that we're pretty sure it's not the case is because other primates also use tools. Chimps use rocks to crack nuts, they fish using sticks for termites. Uh, orangutans also use, uh, sorry, also use sticks to catch meat, but we're, the reason that we think it took off in humans is because we're bipedal. It frees, up, it frees up our hands to use tools without hampering our mobility. And the tools used by Homo habilis were very simple, but they paved the way for... They did show some specialization between chopping, carving, and boring. And they paved the way for Homo erectus, which was the first group to live in a hunter no, sorry. Yeah, a hunter-gatherer type society. Uh, previously, humans have been scavengers and foragers rather than hunters. And around 50,000 years ago, we see what's called the Great Leap Forward. So, tools become a lot more complex. We see people, uh, there's a lot more complex hunting techniques, including pitfall traps. And we also see cave paintings. And I think this is very interesting because if you. Cave painting implies symbolism, which means an appreciation of recognizing an abstract concept, concept representing something in the real world, which some people think implies an ability to think, ab think in abstract, and then led to these lads. <laughs> so, yeah, and as well, cave paintings gave rise to writing, which is obviously a hugely important tool that we use. In fact, it arose twice. 50-ish thousand years ago in Sumeria, and again about 25,000 years ago in Mesoamerica. And farming was a huge game changer in terms of tool use and the development of technology because it meant that people could settle, they could develop specialized skill sets as they never had before. And that's part of why, until relatively recently, there, were quite, there was a lot of disparity in technology around the world. Because if you live in an area where you don't have domesticable animals or the land isn't very, animal, very arable, then a hunter-gatherer lifestyle is just good sense. But for the tribes that did settle down and started developing specialized tool use, it sort of took off and never stopped. A huge chunk of Western culture and economy is based around tools to make our lives more productive, more efficient, easier. And we place an awful lot of trust in tools. It's no longer just to do something that we could do anyway, but better, to kill something farther away, to lift a heavier obstacle. It's, it gives us an awful lot of leisure time. We trust tools to build the tools to keep us safe. And interestingly, as we stop having these obligations, we return to them as hobbies. People uh, write histories of worlds that will never exist for the sheer joy of it. And increasingly as well, we're trying to build tools that will detect their environment without input from us. Things like self-regulating ter thermostats or smart cars, self-driving cars. And we're trying a lot, a lot of research as well is going into creating something that can ape human sentience. And with that in mind, since this is going to be recorded indelibly on the internet. I'd like to say that I'm very excited about our imminent robot overlords. Long may they reign. So, in the Harry Potter universe, in a happier fiction, there's a running joke of Arthur Weasley's obsession with muggle technology, and it's, it's played for laughs. But to be fair to him, magic just works. And to, to build technology, you have to figure out the rules underlying the world and make them work for you. So I can't see why he wouldn't be enamored with that. But that's all, by the way. So the first hominids to use rafts were probably Homo erectus, and that is me out of time. So sorry for the tangent, but I do hope you enjoyed it. Come up to me afterwards for a five-minute monologue about rafts, and thank you for listening. <laughs>